um, as a GIS guy, geospatial intelligence is like my kind of like my my shtick, right? Like I I like adding data to emergency management. I think that's where it needs to go. And then you're talking about climate adaptation, like that's going to be the buzzword this year, especially the next four years with um, you know Administrator Criswell. And so like talking about hitting on all pistons there, like knowing what you should be focusing on, and um, and diving into that. Let's talk about some of the um, some mitigation efforts that you're doing um, in Montgomery County. So if you're identifying through analytics, how are you removing opinion-based analysis from the process? Yeah, so we've been really doing some, um, trying to do climate projection, number one, and, and try, try to understand just you know how, how we extrapolate some of the more recent changes we've seen and what those will look like in 50, 100, and, and 200 years. So we've actually we, ha we actually have a county climate plan that actually is just being announced uh, this you know over the next just right now it's been released for comments, and we did a section in that plan focused on climate adaptation where we try and do some data analytics of you know not just what's the flood hazard today what's it going to be in the future, and then understanding how we can invest our um, you know whether it be has mitigation dollars or uh, or county resources on addressing long term. Uh, flood resiliency. And we're not thinking just about infrastructure. We're thinking about like, how can we use natural environment to as a hazard mitigation technique? And so obviously we know that, you know, trees can prevent, you know, landslides on things like, you know, uh, uh, land subsidence, but they also can help with flooding a great deal if, they, if they're if they're properly maintained in the right kind of um, right kind of a forest in really right kinds of areas. And we're really looking at how we do schemes like that, which you know, obviously getting forests rebuilt or, or, or getting uh, uh, stream bank restoration is one of those things that we don't often think about, but those have long-term consequences if they're, if they're poorly maintained and how your drainage infrastructure will respond to all those things. And so we're trying to really look at a holistic um, uh, across the board uh, intersection of built environment with natural environment and how we can use natural environment to save us resources on the built environment, but also reduce long-term risk. So one of the big things that we're looking at is in areas where we've seen a lot, a huge increase in, in the built environment, trying to understand exactly what implications that's having on our flood floodplain management, not just within our traditional floodplains, but as we see increases in nuisance flooding or urban flooding, uh, how, how that's being influenced and how we can use natural landscapes to try and reduce some of those, some of those risks. And so- Very cool. Yeah, we're looking at, you know, urban tree canopy and all these other things that I think, you know, we as a field are, are you know, many, some, some people have been working on this for a long time. Obviously, we're really trying to integrate with our environmental folks to, to really understand so how, how these concepts play into our mitigation role. And that's sort of a big area of focus. 